various locations via the miracle of Skype, it's the 40th anniversary season of the LTN Hour. Let's Talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailey, co-hosts Brian Schmidt, P.J. Noodleman, and producer Dangerous Dan Margetta. Call the show anytime at 414-421-7901. And now, the creator and host of the fastest hour in radio, Todd Bailing. Well, I don't know. It's not just me, but aren't these the most glorious days of the year in the state of Wisconsin? Oh, my yes. goodness. Hey, great to be with you. Todd Bailing in beautiful Linden Station, Wisconsin. Joined by my three partners, starting with the birthday boy, Brian Schmidt, is celebrating today. No, it was yesterday. You're off by a day. It was yesterday. Well, we're not on the air on Saturdays, so happy birthday to you. Well, thank you. And uh, Yes, ready for Talladega and hope we don't have piles of cars smoldering in a big heap. Like, Like every other time they race there. Yeah. Right. It's the most expensive racetrack there is. And our uh, on-the-scene reporters today, both P.J. Noodleman and Dan Margetta, are at Oktoberfest. Actually, not at Oktoberfest. You are in somewhere rural western Wisconsin, right? We are at the race shop that Toby operates out of. It's owned by Chris Johnson, and uh, this is where we're set up. This is where we did it last year, too. Yeah, the Talladega party is down south, and the Oktoberfest race weekend party is up north. So it's kind of a party weekend for everybody race-wise, I guess. Indeed. And Dan is upright and taking nourishment after putting me 11 laps down before I even hooked up with him yesterday. (laughs) What is the official location of the shop? It's in West Salem. Oh, it is? Oh. Yeah, not not too far from the racetrack. We're probably four minutes from the racetrack. Oh, my. Yeah, that's – boy, that's – metropolitan uh, lacrosse area right there well um it's it's a double whammy today uh talladega of course uh it's going to be on nbc that's how important they take this talladega because of course fringe race fans like to say oh hey talladega today let's go watch all the crashing that's so much fun I'm not so sure about that attitude, but uh, I bet you it has a little something to do with why it's, uh, NBC's run is uh, starting now. The green flag will be at 1.33 this afternoon. On the other hand, it's uh, one of your bigger short track events of the year in the state of Wisconsin. Um, Oktoberfest is at the Lacrosse Fe- uh, Fairgrounds speedway and uh it's a pretty big deal around these parts because it's kind of as the season's coming to a close and it's not just racing is it you party animals no it it is a lot of fun uh it's the family reunion if you will for everybody you get to see everyone from the race community because it's one of the larger hurrahs for the end of the season it's everybody from every track you know Dell, Slinger, Kakana, Madison, Lacrosse, Minnesota. Minnesota. I made some Minnesota friends this weekend. It's mm-hmm. just kind of cool. It's a lot of networking going on. It really is. It really is. Um, networking. Drinking, yeah, I was going to say networking and alcohol seems to go together. Liquid when networking. It, there we go. That sounds like it's something hoity toity. Working. All right. Well, uh, we'll get a little into, more into what's going on at Lacrosse later in the program. Michael McDowell. Boy, this guy. Uh, certainly knows how to get around these, uh, we can't call them restrictor. What did, Brian, you had a term for it that I liked uh, recently. Pack, pack, pack racing. Trends. That's it, pack yep. racing. Pack track. racing. 183.063 miles per hour, 52.310 seconds to get around that 2.66 mile track. Um, and uh, big fun for everybody, except, uh, you know, this is one of those, question marks can you survive the race and to put this in the playoffs is almost like it's almost like being kind of mean um how in the hell are you supposed to get yourself advanced when all they do is crash all the time um we had a a real good example of that in the truck race uh, Friday uh was it Friday <laughs> yep, Friday afternoon 
Yeah, I thought it was wanted, but it was. It got ugly though too. Very, very towards the end of the finish there. Uh, Ended up having so many trucks crash. Ty Majeski ended up uh, finishing 12th, which I don't even know how that happened. But he and Corey Heim uh, got tangled up in that. And Heim ended up hitting Ty right in the door. Uh, did kind of He got hurt. Ty did on his ankle. I don't think it's anything serious because I did see him walking around just fine. But, um, yeah, he, he got kind of banged up in that one. And, uh, of course, Sam Mayer. Um, had a decent run, one of his, you know, he, he really didn't run up at the front very much until it was uh, showtime at the end. But then um, he got DQ'd. I, what in the hell is going on over there? Um, of course, it had nothing to do with Sam. He just drives the, you know, I don't know. It's and I'm thinking of that uh, Sam in the uh, Xfinity series because Sammy Smith won that thing. Wait a minute, Sammy Smith? <laughs> where, where did this guy come from? He hasn't won squat this year, has he? No, but no. his his dad definitely pushes him to try to do the best he can. That's for sure. And how did Sam get DQ'd anyway? The car was too low. Is that what it was? A rear height was low. Which is kind of funny because it's probably one of the few cars that weren't all smashed up in that race. Right. And then... That's why I don't understand how they could even do that because that's it wasn't that's part of the thing. Car is it going to really fit the template after this particular track anyway? I don't no. know. Well, uh, Grant Enfinger like... <laughs> and Sammy Smith were the lucky recipients of racing at Talladega. They're both uh, good drivers, but, uh, you know, if you don't win much, it's a good place to go because you just never know you could win. And that's what we're looking at today uh, at Talladega. Anybody could win this race. Uh, Guys in the chase or uh, playoffs or guys not in the playoffs. And uh, the way things are going, like, for instance, last week at Kansas City, one of the not in the chase playoffs guys won it. Uh, it was watermelon time as Chastain took advantage of uh, an aero accident between Chase Briscoe and Kyle Busch. Brian, it looked as though Bush was going to win that thing, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. And, that, and, and he just, it, Chase Briscoe was trying to stay on the lead lap. He didn't really do anything wrong. He was just running his lane. They came out of turn two, and, and Chase drifted up just ever so slightly. There was still a lane there, but the air for these new cars is just something that it's almost like you're just getting shoved and the air came off of Kyle's car and around he went and that was it for him and chase did nothing wrong. And, and much to our surprise and, and a younger Kyle Bush probably would have, you know, lamented about the whole thing and, and, and complained about chase. He, he did not. He just said, you know, it's, it's a product of these cars and, and I just, I just lost it coming off the corner. So that's, that's the way, Way it goes, and his winless streak continues. So we'll see. He's got a handful of races left this year to see if he can keep the. Is it like twenty years in a row he would have won a race, something like that? Unbelievable. I think so. And, and it, that thing yesterday or last week was just it, you had to look ahead, and when lap cars come up, you have to be on the same page. But you want him to go low or high, and I don't think they were on the same page there. You know, Kyle was going to pass him on the high side, and Chase was going to take the high lane and get in the low lane. So sometimes they maybe got to work ahead, even spotter wise, and say. Okay, that guy's maybe half up ahead of me, but when we get there, we got to figure out where we're going to go. Kyle is uh, stuck in a bad dream right now. His career was just flying along just fine, and between uh, losing M&Ms and losing his ride there and ending up at Childress, and then it all gets stirred in with this next-gen car, which he will be the first one to tell you he just hasn't got the car figured out like he drove the other cars it's he's not um he's it's not his style whatever these cars are are not his style and uh, this nightmare of his is uh, continuing he i don't know that leaving childress and going anywhere else is going to make that big of a difference he's just not he's totally frustrated with these cars now there are people that don't mind seeing Kyle Busch frustrated because, you know, he does some crazy things sometimes, and it's very entertaining. But uh, the frustration level, I mean, it's so bad that he didn't even badmouth Briscoe. Of course, you know, I got to tell you, 
you, know, you come across, if you know how to handle the air in these cars, um, you're doing good. You, you can crash a guy without getting anywhere near him. Believe it or not, it's just a, a strange set of circumstances. And Kyle Busch's frustration continues. And that said, I, I'm still picking him to win today because I'm going to pick him every race till the end of the year. We'll be back. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. It's the grand finale of short track racing in the Midwest. The 55th running of the Oktoberfest race weekend. October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Don't miss the intense competition as drivers throughout the Midwest converge at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway for four days of great stock car racing. Witness challengers and champions battle side by side in Wisconsin's oldest and most prestigious short track racing event. Be a part of history as over eight different champions are crowned. It's the 55th annual Oktoberfest race weekend. October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Join us in the fun. Fall has arrived, but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies. And EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. EMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit PMFLandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. Kevin Harlan here from Monday Night Football in Westwood One. Join Ross Tucker and me from Arrowhead in Kansas City this week. It's the 4-0 Chiefs taking on the Saints. Derek Carr in New Orleans started the season with two straight wins, but now have fallen to 2-2. Two and two. Can they bounce back against Patrick Mahomes and the defending Super Bowl champs? Tune in to find out on Monday Night Football. Coverage starts at 7 o'clock on Milwaukee's home for the NFL. 97-3 the game. Speaking of which, the Packers uh, start late. They got a late game today, so uh, you will be able to watch at least the beginning of Talladega when there's no action. They're all going to be running into each other and flying through the air and all that sort of thing as the Packer game gets going. So you know, it'll be interesting to, to to make your your choices. Choose carefully. Um, but that's uh, what we've got looking for. By the way, 80 degrees and 0% chance of rain today in Talladega. They're going to get it in and um, uh, should be extremely entertaining. <clears throat> this week, uh, the news came out that if if Bill France Sr. wasn't spinning in his grave already, this really did it. Um, the two teams, 23-11 in front row, that did not sign when they were told to sign or they would risk losing their charters. They went and hired a New York attorney by the name of Jeffrey Kessler, who is suing NASCAR for antitrust. I can't imagine how this is going to benefit our sport. On the other hand, you cannot have a business model where nobody makes money except the big brother, which NASCAR is the only one that makes money. They take a cut of everything. Um, the teams are left with the whatever NASCAR decides to give them that they agree to. If you don't sign it right now, you're going to lose your charter. Um, it's it's wide open right now, and I'm not exactly sure where to go with this. Uh, tell you what, Brian, um, you start because I, I just – I can't imagine this is good, and then again, it might turn the whole sport upside down and change the way we do business. Well, to understand the suit, there's five major bullet points that he's pointing to here, uh, that NASCAR and the France family operate without transparency. They have stifled the competition, and they control the sport of stock car racing in ways that unfairly benefit them at the expense of team owners, drivers, sponsors, partners, and fans. Those five bullet points are A, buying the majority of the premier racetracks that are exclusive to NASCAR. Remember years ago, the tracks were owned by all different people. 
not anymore. You basically have Speedway Motorsports and you have NASCAR with the exception of Pocono and uh, Gateway and yeah, Indy. They're... Yeah. Yeah. And then the so that's one of the one of the big things. Another one is imposing exclusivity deals on NASCAR sanctioned tracks, meaning NASCAR is the only one that can operate those tracks. Nothing else can really be done there. Uh, another one of the bullet points was they acquired ARCA, which was the only other notable stock car racing series out there. So they basically took away any chance of a competition, even though ARCA wasn't much of a competition, I mean, in, in our opinion, but you never know if that would have been available back then. Another one is preventing teams from participating in other stock car races while also retaining the ownership over the next-gen car and parts, meaning they built that car so that you can only run that car with NASCAR. You can't take that car and go run any other series with it. And finally, they're forcing the other teams to buy parts from their single-source supplier, meaning there's no competition in that, in that, so that whatever the price of the part is, the teams have to pay that, um, you know. And and when you don't have competition, that makes the part, you know, makes the prices what they are, and why these prices are so high, and these teams aren't making any money. So those are the big, the five big things that the guy is is is, is focusing on, and in this lawsuit. And you know, in my opinion, I kind of I kind of think it's all right to do that. You know, if you're going to turn NASCAR into a situation where you have to buy a charter to be in it. Okay, years ago it was like wide open. You could just build a car. You know, the Miller brothers did it here. In, in Sheboygan County, they built a car, they took it down to Daytona and a couple other races, and they raced. can't do that anymore. You can still build a car, but you're going to go there and you ain't going to race for any money. So you need to buy a charter in order to be in the exclusive deal where you actually can make some money on this. And he's basically saying that there's no competition here. It's, it, that's why it's called an anti-competitive uh, type lawsuit. So NASCAR opened themselves up for this by doing the charter system. Uh, is, is what if you put all the pieces together that's that's kind of how this we've gotten to this point where now you're making these charters millions of dollars in value however in order to buy one of these you're not going to be getting a return on your investment because nascar is funneling all the money into themselves mm. nascar is private um, and you know it's their game now <clears throat> so i from listening to you brian um it, Everything would have been fine if they didn't suddenly offer these charters. That's kind of the way, if, if you kind of read between the lines of what they're looking at, that's kind of what it is. And when they came to them with these charters and said, this is the deal, you guys have to accept it. They give it to you in the morning, and by 6 o'clock that night you have to accept it. Otherwise, you may risk losing your charter. That's that's not a playing fair pool. It's it's not. And that's And that's where you have some people that haven't been in the business very long, uh, Michael Jordan, who's been around other sports, that says, "Hey, this isn't right," you know. And and if you if you listen to the interview that they did with Dave Moody, that Sirius XM took off, but now I believe they put it back on, so you can't hear it again. Yeah, the guy talks fixed. about. Yeah. The, the guy talks about how the question was asked. Well, how come only two teams are not, you know, are, are upset about this, and how come the Rick Hendricks and the and the Joe Gibbs and and the Richard Childresses of the world, you know, aren't a part of this? He says, in private, they are. They just have been a part of this so long. They feel they have to just accept that stuff, and we're trying to tell them that you don't have to. So on their behalf, that's why we're filing this lawsuit. And he says behind closed doors, they're, they, they, Rick Hendrick says, "Yeah, this isn't a sustainable environment." So and he has made yeah. money, I guess, the forever. Quarters. And he's, you know, he's a major, he's a champion. He's got four teams that compete at the absolute top of the sport, and uh, and he's paying so many people to work there. And he's not making any money. Well, then you say, well, then exactly why would he do this? Well, does it does it help him sell cars at the Hendrick uh, uh, Automotive dealerships nationwide? Uh, boy, it seems like that's an awful lot to go through just to, for an advertising ploy. And then, what exactly is front row selling that they're you know that they're getting an advantage? Nothing. So. I don't know. NASCAR uh, kind of run this whole thing a bit like the mafia, you know, where they would, you know, got to have the, they're going to keep their thumb on the scale for themselves at the expense of the teams, and they have kind of a screw it attitude, you know, we're going to do what we're going to do. This is our playground. It, but like Brian said, once they opened up those charters, that kind of puts a new fold onto things, and that's where the leverage is for these teams to be able to do the lawsuit. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to see how this works out because it, it could go really bad. I mean, it, it could mm-hmm. blow the whole thing up. And that's probably part of the reason I think some of the other teams that have been around a while didn't, didn't take this war right away because it was, well, you know, we, we may win it, but will we really win it in the end? I mean, if you think back in the, early, in the 90s when CART split with this mm-hmm. happened IndyCar, they, their owners had, 
had you know a lot of say in it, and, and that's kind of what caused the split. NASCAR being kind of a dictatorship avoided that and actually grew there. Now they're at that point where they're big, and, and now we're going to have this yeah. owners having some say. And conversely, if cooler heads prevail, what could happen is a more equitable agreement could come out of this, and NASCAR will just have to be a little smarter about what they do because, as we talked before we started the show, Things like having to build the stadium so that they could go race at that, ter- you know, building a racetrack for a weekend. How stupid is that with your money? And then mm-hmm. Brian, you mentioned, too, going down to Mexico and yeah. traveling back and forth, back and forth across the United States. They could be a little smarter about how they're doing things. And Absolutely. Like, they have- isn't that what all of America has to do right now in this economy anyway? We all got to use a little more smarts with our money. Why shouldn't NASCAR be a little smarter about it so that they can have better equity for their their teams? If anybody wants to weigh in on this as we go to break here, we'll give you our number. Um, you can give us an idea or a comment, 414-421-7901. And I got a feeling we're not done with this subject yet. We'll be back. It's the grand finale of short track racing in the Midwest, the 55th running of the Oktoberfest race weekend. October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Don't miss the intense competition as drivers throughout the Midwest converge at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway for four days of great stock car racing. Witness challengers and champions battle side by side in Wisconsin's oldest and most prestigious short track racing event. Be a part of history as over eight different champions are crowned. It's the 55th annual Oktoberfest race weekend. October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Join us in the fun. Miller Sales and Service of Random Lake is where to go for a trailer no matter what you're hauling. Tom and Jerry Miller have been selling trailers from B&B, Trophy, and Bravo for over 50 years. Quality and integrity is what put them on the map on the corner of 57 and K since 1939. Home of the number 89 dirt and asphalt cars of Brad Miller. That's Miller Sales and Service. It's where to go for a trailer just 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. Call them, 920-994-4358. Fall has arrived, but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies. And EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black color. EMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit PMFLandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. The Larrabee and LaPay podcast is back for season three. On the latest episode, Wayne and Matt talk with Michael Silver, author of the book, The Why is Everything, a story of football, rivalry, and revolution. It features Matt LaFleur, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Mike McDaniel, and Raheem Morris. Hear every episode of the Larrabee and LaPay podcast, available anytime on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Presented by UW Credit Union. Here, forever you. And uh, I had really not uh, uh, understood, and I didn't see all the uh, legalese that went into what NASCAR presented as their last offer and sign it or else. But uh, our contributor, Aaron Baird, on Facebook reminds us that uh, there's there's more to it. As, as part of what they didn't sign, NASCAR required the teams to release any antitrust claims against NASCAR. Well, if you don't sign it, then you don't do that. I, you know, it used to be cars couldn't make it through tech if, if you pissed off the hierarchy in NASCAR. That's just a little bit of how they did business. And now there are so many eyeballs on this sport that even NASCAR has to be careful not to to show any what might look like something that could come up in court. I mean, come on. Has has going to court ever really helped uh, any racing entity? I'm not sure about that. I do know that this Jeffrey Kessler, the attorney who's running the uh, lawsuit, is the same guy uh, that made that changed that overturned the NCAA rules and made uh, professional athletes out of uh, college students. Uh, so this guy, he's good at this. He's done it before, 
And really, what is the end game? What are we looking for? You have to have somebody calling the shots, don't we? Anybody can jump in here. A, b- a bigger piece yeah. of the pie for the teams. That, that That's what they're looking for. You know, These teams are running on such a thin margin right now. They need to get a bigger amount of it. And, and like PJ said, instead of NASCAR spending all this money to build a street circuit in downtown Chicago or to, to build a, a, a racetrack inside the Coliseum or to take all your stuff and drive it all the way down to Mexico City, that money should be going to the teams. And you should be utilizing, you know, you have a track that just sits empty in Chicago right now that they don't use. That NASCAR owns that, but it just sits there. So they have Hello, so much money. My road America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, the tracks that they actually own, they own Chicago. They have so much money, they're telling us that it's okay for them to just leave that building and just sit empty, that entire facility. You know, so I think the teams see where NASCAR is going with their money and realize, hey, wait a minute here, you must have, you know, flexibility and a lot of extra income. Meanwhile, we're sitting here, we have to lay off people, you know, we have to spend all this money to buy these parts for these cars, which, you know, we tell you these cars aren't putting on a good product on a short track, and you refuse to do anything to help us out. You know, so I think that's where the end game is here. And, you know, this isn't necessarily going to go to court. It, it could take over two years before it to happen. But it might open enough eyes, and NASCAR might have enough egg on their face where they're going to say, all right, we gotta, we got to change things up here a little bit and be a little more frugal on our end and give the teams a little more money on their end. You know, the drivers have already taken massive pay cuts. Kyle Larson said that in a press conference this, this, this week, that this is the only major sport in America where the athletes are actually making less than they did before. You know, think about it's that. It's going to settle out of court, I All think. Right. They're not yeah. going to want, NASCAR's not going to want to open their books up. But Margetta's going to. The first something. big step you're going to see is this, they're going to file an injunction. They're going to come up saying, let us continue to operate under this charter agreement while this lawsuit is still going on. In other words, you can't take our charter while this lawsuit is going on. They're going to have to get an injunction from court for that. We'll see if they win that. If they lose that, we'll see. Then they could they could revoke the charters or not. That's the first step. I, I I think legally they may have a problem because this isn't a sports league. It's not like the NFL. It's not like like Major League Baseball. They're they're chartered. They're not franchises yet. And they're still they're still all independent contractors, you know, competing on this platform. And the other teams signed the agreement. I, I get they may have been you know under duress. Yeah, under duress doing it, but that's all conjecture. That's all. There, there's no do we have solid proof of that right now? And that that could that could hurt them in in on the legal side of this thing. Yeah. But, but watch you that know, injunction. That's the first thing. The injunction is going to be first because they're going to file the injunction that says they can't revoke our charters while this lawsuit's in place, and we'll see what happens if they grant that. Well, then we're in for a long haul. And I do believe at the end of the day, I think they're all going to eventually settle this out of court. Again, NASCAR does not want to have to open up their books and let the public look behind the curtain. It's absolutely right. My thought though is you know if you're gonna they want permanent charters and i have to say um i'm totally sympathetic with nascar's position on this how can we give you guarantee monetary guarantees when the we don't really know what the amount is going to be without a tv contract and uh, we can only extend these charters as long for the for the duration of whatever the television contract is or we're you know we can't a good lawyer can write that into the contract almost every legal contract has something at the end about has the the right to adjust per market standards or market conditions or something like that they can put something in there but they're going to just try to cry foul on that to try to push this aside and make their case you know, not comparing other leagues, but how does football work? Like NFL, they're, they're, I know they're franchise of the teams, but their contract gets renewed on TV contracts so many times. I'm not sure what cut they get out of everything yeah. on that side, but they're, are the franchises permanent in, in the NFL? Yeah, they are. But the other thing, though, and everybody, was like, everybody thinks football is God, right? Okay, I'm not going to argue. I do know that they have probably the biggest eyes on it. But I think NASCAR gets so caught up doing the comparison thing to football. If they would just do their thing and not feel like they have to compare or to compete with football, just do your thing. If you put a good product out there, the audience will come. If you quit trying to put together a dog and pony show and just put together a good, solid racing program, I think people will watch. Yeah, well... uh you know, I still to this day cannot figure out why NASCAR is so 
headstrong that they won't listen to all the teams that are saying our product is so crappy on short tracks. This is what we want you to do. And they say, no, that will cost you too much money, and we have decided that's not what we want to do. I don't get it. We're glad you're tuned in. We'll sneak away for a break, and uh, we'll be back. Hang in there. Fall has arrived, but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies. And EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black color. EMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit PMFLandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. It's the grand finale of short track racing in the Midwest. The 55th running of the Oktoberfest race weekend. October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Don't miss the intense competition as drivers throughout the Midwest converge at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway for four days of great stock car racing. Witness challengers and champions battle side by side in Wisconsin's oldest and most prestigious short track racing event. Be a part of history as over eight different champions are crowned. It's the 55th annual Oktoberfest race weekend. October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Join us in the fun. A valiant comeback falls short. Lost down the right side into the end zone. Intercepted oh, by Byron Murphy. Now 2-2, two two, the Packers head to L.A. for a Sunday matchup with the Rams. Pre-game show is live at 11 a.m. on your home for Packers football. 97-3 the game. A reminder that the LTN podcast is available on iHeart, iTunes, and all major platforms and a similar reminder that racing nuggets if you haven't seen it yet you really need to do yourself a favor and tune in to pj's spectacular uh program uh pj what is uh, the latest issue the latest episode features charlie menard you might remember him from the super late model days in the early 2000s he was a fabulous guest and talks a little bit about how he's sort of staying involved in racing and what he's doing these days. You can catch that as well on YouTube at Racing Nuggets, or you can just uh, head over to wherever you get your podcasts, and you can download it there and take a listen. You have a real knack for getting these people to open up and uh, entertain us. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you need to check out Racing Nuggets. It's big fun. Hey, um, this you know, we're we're used to seeing crappy weather hit uh, the Gulf Coast, whether it's Texas or Louisiana or uh, even Alabama and Mississippi and especially Florida. Um, and when the last one went through and, and kind of caused major problems, you thought, well, it'll move away and it won't be a problem uh, if, and once it comes over land. Well, that wasn't the case with this last one, and I don't know what her name was. But it went all the way up. Helene. 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 Hurricane Helene. Hurricane Helene. Well, talk about hell. Uh, mm. She took... I cannot, uh, it's incomprehensible to me to think of trillions of gallons of water, but that is what was dumped on western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, around the uh, uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park, uh, it's, it's portions of Virginia. Um, it's just been absolutely terrible for some of those. Uh, I-40, did, I don't know if you guys saw this, the entire freeway was wiped out and I believe it was Eastern Tennessee, and they're they're looking at rebuilding it. It won't be done for a year and a half. A freeway. Um, mm-hmm. That's how bad it is. And um, the NASCAR community has jumped in to help. Many teams 
and uh, sp- specific uh, uh, owners have helicopters. I knew that Greg Biffle had his own helicopter. We we talked about it in the past that uh, he likes to buzz around and take videos and stuff. Well, <clears throat> in his uh, retirement from NASCAR, he's really stepped up and has uh, started r- running um, supplies to people that are stranded. And boy, oh boy, they're, they're the people that are really stranded. Um, FEMA's got their hands full to get this thing straightened out here. And uh, it, they, they're not doing it by themselves. Um, many private individuals are helping out. And Greg Biffle has been at the lead of that thing with his uh, little helicopter taking um loads of uh, provisions into really hard to reach areas and helping out um god bless them how about that you know okay. uh, I mean, many of these places you can't get to because all the roads are washed out so you take a mountain and you got these little these villages and cities that are built on these mountains the water runs downhill so basically when you're dumped trillions of gallons of water sometimes 30 inches of rain on a mountain it's all got to run somewhere and it just took everything with it and you know thank god for people like for Biffle and, and all these other folks that are out there helping these people out because there's no way you can get to any of these places. I heard some people in uh, one interview say you couldn't even get a four-wheeler to some of these locations. No, you know, so yeah. the only way to get in there is by air. It's almost like you're living on an island now. Isn't that it crazy? really is. How- and it's very American that uh, people are pulling together to try to help one another out because the wheels of government don't always move very fast. Yeah, during during election season, we can see how non-unified this country really is. And it takes something like a disaster to really show what being an American is all about. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to see that the NASCAR community is at the front of the uh, list. I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, North Wilkesboro is is a, a, a huge area that was affected up there, and that's one of the uh, drop off points. And they're they're stepped up too. So, it's uh, it's pretty cool and uh, makes you proud to to wear the red, white, and blue once in a while, doesn't it? I mean, you, you can't watch television and be proud right now. So you might as well see some of the things that are that are happening uh, that uh, make us all proud to be Americans. So glad to see it. Um, by the I way, this this song. <laughs> I'm proud. Never mind. You don't want to hear me sing. How about Bubba and Amanda Wallace welcomed a little boy this this uh, was it this week or recently anyway within the last week. Uh, his name is Bex. 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 Yeah, B E C K S. Bex. I didn't write his middle name down, but Bex Wallace. And uh, supposedly that's all Bubba can think about. And who can blame him? He's a dad for the first time. And congratulations to the Wallaces. That's uh, pretty cool stuff. And in other good news, it became official this week that Carson Quapel will take over the number one car from Sam Mayer when he leaves for uh, that number uh, double O car next year. Carson Quapel will be fully sponsored by Bass Pro Shops, and uh, from what we have seen of Carson Quapple jumping into uh, uh, the more prolific Xfinity series, he looks pretty damn good in these cars. He was running really good yesterday till something happened late in that race, uh, right, guys? I mean, I, he was like in the top six late in the race. The coolest yeah, level Wisconsin connection to that car. You know, we have Sam Mayer in that car. You know, for the last several years, and now, you know, albeit Carson didn't, you know, wasn't born in Wisconsin, isn't really from here, but we can still claim him because his dad is from here. So it is cool to see, you know, the Wisconsin ties to that car. And yes, I think he's going to do outstanding things in that car. Yeah, uh, Janesville is the hometown for uh, for uh, Travis Quapel, who raced. Uh, he started out racing at Rockford and then went up to Madison while I was in my uh, days at Madison and won a championship there. And, and, and he's, he was 19 when he started up there, which nowadays sounds a little older, doesn't it? Well, I, 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 but when I mean, you're talking about guys like, you know, Ty Fredrickson, Fredrickson, you know, well, he's four, 15 now. And look at how he's you know, unbelievable. And, Connor Zilich, what is he? Not even 18, right? Oh, good God. And look at the talent and uh, the money behind the itches. Uh, that's that's what blows me away. We're going to sneak away and uh, come back with some results, and uh, we're going to start talking a little bit more about lacrosse when we come back. Miller 
Trailer Sales and Service of Random Lake is where to go for a trailer no matter what you're hauling. Tom and Jerry Miller have been selling trailers from B&B, Trophy, and Bravo for over 50 years. Quality and integrity is what put them on the map on the corner of 57 and K since 1939. Home of the number 89 dirt and asphalt cars of Brad Miller. That's Miller's Sales and Service. It's where to go for a trailer just 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. Call them, 920-994-4358. Fall has arrived, but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies. And PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit PMFLandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. A valiant comeback falls short. Tucker Kraft brings the tackle to the 10, to the 5, to the pylon. Touchdown! Still looking, waiting, throwing, end zone. Touchdown! A loft down the right side into the end zone, intercepted oh, no. by Byron Murphy. Oh, no. Now 2-2, two and two, the Packers head to L.A. for a Sunday matchup with the Rams. Doug Russell and the Potawatomi Sportsbook. Bet above the rest. Pre-game show is live at 11 a.m. on your home for Packers football. 97-3 the game. TN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. As we continue to wind through fall here, it really doesn't feel like fall. What an incredible stretch of weather. When you think back to June and July and May when we had rain like every other day, and it's been incredible right now. So it's allowed everybody to get their fall specials in. We'll start Thursday, Wheatland, Missouri, the Lucas Oil Speedway for the Lucas Oil MLRA. Night number one of their fall nationals for the Super Late Models, and Ryan Gustin grabbed the win there Friday night. At Beaver Dam, and I believe this might be the last dirt race in the state of Wisconsin for the year. Beaver Dam's Fall Classic. Night number one in the IMSA Modifieds, Benji LaCrosse was your winner. In the stock cars was Kenny Richards, and the Grand Nationals was Will Source. Down in Jacksonville, Illinois, the MOWA 410 Sprints, Paul Neheiser was your winner. They were joined by the Extreme Outlaw Midgets, and Zach Dom grabbed the feature win there. Fairbury, Illinois, Friday night, the Mars Dirt Car Series for the Super Late Models. Brian Shirley grabbed the win. The Modifieds went to Mike McKinney. Night number two in Wheatland, Missouri for the Fall Nationals for the Lucas Oil MLRA. Ryan Gustin made it two for two, picking up Friday night's feature win. Amarillo, Texas, the Route 66 Motor Speedway for the USMTS Modifieds. Jake O'Neill was your winner. Out in Imperial, Pennsylvania, the Pittsburgh Motor Speedway for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Devin Moran grabbed the win there. That was the prelude to the Pittsburgher. Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania for the Williams Grove Speedway. That event got fogged out Friday night. The fog got so thick, the sprint cars could not run, so they were going to make that up on Saturday. Which moves us to Saturday, the final night of the Fall Classic at Beaver Dam. In the IMCA Modifieds, Dan Radel was your winner. The IMCA Stock Cars, Benji LaCrosse. And in the Grand Nationals, Will Source made it a clean sweep on the weekend. Down in Jacksonville, Illinois, the MOWA 410 Sprints for night number two there. Joe B. Miller grabbed the win. If you see the highlights of that race, that was a thrilling finish there. Last corner, last lap pass of Joel Myers Jr. to grab that win. In the Extreme Midgets, Gavin Miller was your winner. Night number two at Fairbury for the Falls Frenzy. $12,000 the win for the Mars Dirt Cars uh, Late Models. Brian Shirley made it two for two, grabbing the win there. Out in Ogilvy, Minnesota, the FYE Fall Classic for my good friend Chris Steppen's final big event of the year. In the Wasota Late Models, Pat Doerr was your winner. The Modifieds went to Landon Atkinson. Night number two in Amarillo, Texas at the Route 66 Motor Speedway for the USMTS Modifieds. Jake O'Neill made it a clean sweep, winning both events there. Wheatland, Missouri, the final night of the Fall Nationals there for the Lucas Oil MLRA Late Models. Chris Simpson grabbed the win. Imperial, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh Motor Speedway for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Pittsburgher 100, $50,000 to win. And Jonathan Davenport picked up the win there. That's the start of the Lucas Oil playoffs. Four drivers there 
I believe it's Davenport, Ricky Thornton Jr., Tim McCready, and Devin Moran are running for the championship there. They're going to run like four races to finish the season instead of having a winner-take-all like they did last year. So Jonathan Davenport put himself in great position by winning that one. And finally, the biggest money race of the weekend was in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, the Williams Grove Speedway for the World of Outlaw NOS Indy Drink Sprint Car Series, the National Open. They ran Friday night's makeup series yesterday afternoon, and Buddy Kofoid won that. And last night, $75,000 on the line for the National Open, and Carson Macedo Grabbed the win there. Bill Baylog had to take a provisional start 27th, worked his way all the way up to 9th last night. So he continues to have a very impressive rookie season on the World of Outlaw Tour. And that is everything for this week. All right. On the asphalt side of things, of course, the 55th annual Oktoberfest race weekend at Lacrosse Speedway underway. On Thursday night, the super late models were in action. The Futures, Ty Fredrickson picked up that checkered flag. Super late model Knights. Dalton Zare was the winner. That's basically your up-and-comers and then your seasoned veterans in their separate super late model events. So congrats to both of them. The lacrosse late model division still in the throes of their points battle. Had double features on Thursday night. Adam Benzik picked up one feature win. Skyler Holzhausen in his Toby car picked up the other feature. Lacrosse sportsman also ran. Bill Schott was your winner of the feature. Bob Fort was your champion. The Hornets ran. Carter Horstman was the winner of the feature. Jimmy Bjorkman was the champ. And the Lacrosse Street Stocks, Andy Moore was the feature winner. And Stephen Brazda was your champion. Friday night's action was big with the Dick Trickle 99. The three-segment race, Ty Fredrickson picked up the first win. Casey Johnson, the second segment. And then Ty Fredrickson picking up the third segment. Fredrickson was the overall winner of that Dick Trickle 99. By the way, Weir's Machine makes incredible trophies. Uh, they had a really cool one again this year for that. And then we had Lacrosse Late Models running two more features. This would decide the championship. It was a tight battle going into the night. Skyler Holshausen was tied with Jacob Gady in the points at the start of the evening. Nick Barstead picked up the first win. Skyler Holshausen picked up the second. And then he was the champion as well for the lacrosse late models for the season. Area sportsmen did their tribute to uh, Rick Shermerhorn. Uh, it was a nice memorial race that family continues to support. That it was a $7,000 payday and Dave Troop oh. picked up check and the win it was pretty cool 21 time dell's champion yeah how about that then then last night here at oktoberfest the big eight late models were in action randy Sargent, a dominating performance he picked up the win and then michael bilderbeck in his toby car was the champion there mid-american uh, racing series was also in action ron vandermeer jr uh, was the winner, and Scotty Gardner Jr. was the champion. Midwest Truck Series, Chester Ace picked up the feature win, and Brandon Reichenberger picked up the championship. Pretty big deal there. Uh, his young son is uh, going through some health challenges right now, so that was a big heartfelt win for that champion. And then the Midwest Dash Series was also running. Davey Pennell was the winner of that. And, of course, the ARCA uh, series was in action as well at Toledo. And William Sawalich was the race winner. And Andres Perez was your champion. And that's a um, wrap. I got one, one, quick, one quick result right. to add for those of you that have heard the name. I was spending the week at the Road America at the SEC National Championship runoffs. The name Dudley Fleck ring a bell for anybody? Oh, yeah. Used to, wrote, used to run, uh, in the, yes, run the old ARCA series. Well, yesterday... Dudley Fleck was running in the Formula Atlantic Series cars, would look like kind of look like the Indy Next cars right now, and has never won a national championship. Made a pass in in uh, Canada Corner, turn 12 on the last lap to win his first ever national championship yesterday. Cool moment there. Uh, his whole family was there. All his crew guys were there in Victory Lane. Uh, cool thing. He's been racing for well over 30 years and never was able to win an SEC SEC national championship. Got it done yesterday here at Road America. So that was really cool. A quality guy involved with the uh, Miller distributorship down in the Cedar Rapids area. Mm. Yeah, his car looks just like the old Danny Sullivan Miller American car, the old red and white yeah. car that he went into with. That's how he's got it painted up. Cool looking That's car. That's awesome. What a great guy. I'm glad that he did that. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Brian. If uh, anybody wants to watch today, MidwestTour.tv. It's supposed to be on Track TV also, but it I... Is there. You have to buy a special uh, membership to be able to get it onto there. It's kind of like how with Racing America has a little adder for that. But if you've got the Midwest Tour 
subscription, you'll get it on there. You know, this is like an announcer's convention I wasn't invited to. I think I counted seven different announcers for, for the uh, for the racing, including See, Geiger. If you come to lacrosse more often, people would be like, we got to get Bailey on the mic. No, 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 no. We, we get that's Bailey. good. I, this, I'm enjoying my mostly retirement. This is this is good. I, I get to sit in the stands, drink beer, and go, woohoo! And, You're uh, actually going to come today. And yeah, I'm just, yeah. About that. I'm going to come since this program is over. I'm hitting the road. We'll be right back. It's the grand finale of short track racing in the Midwest. The 55th running of the Oktoberfest race weekend. October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Don't miss the intense competition as drivers throughout the Midwest converge at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway for four days of great stock car racing. Witness challengers and champions battle side by side in Wisconsin's oldest and most prestigious short track racing event. Be a part of history as over eight different champions are crowned. It's the 55th annual Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest Race Weekend, October 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. Join us in the fun! Miller Sales and Service of Random Lake is where to go for a trailer, no matter what you're hauling. Tom and Jerry Miller have been selling trailers from B&B, Trophy, and Bravo for over 50 years. Quality and integrity is what put them on the map on the corner of 57 and K since 1939. Home of the number 89 dirt and asphalt cars of Brad Miller. That's Miller Sales and Service. It's where to go for a trailer, just 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. Call them, 920-994-4358. Fall has arrived, but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies. And EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. EMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit EMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. A valiant comeback falls short. Off down the right side into the end zone. Intercepted oh, by Byron Murphy. Now 2-2, two and two, the Packers head to L.A. for a Sunday matchup with the Rams. Pre-game show is live at 11 a.m. on your home for Packers football. 97-3 the game. Well, back, uh, Legacy Motorsports, that's what used to be uh, Petty Country, and Petty had an investor, and then suddenly Jimmy Johnson came in and kind of elbowed Richard out of the deal. Well, they keep hiring people. They had um, they have Matt Kenseth as a driver coach or something like that. Uh, they hired some guy named Brian Campy. Um, it, it's not the guy who's a short track owner down in Florida. Uh, PJ, where'd this guy come from? He's actually from Alabama. Um, but his last name is spelled C A M P E. So it's a different campy, but he's now going to be the technical director at legacy club. Um, he's been in motorsports for almost 20 years. He has experience both in NASCAR and Indy car. He actually started as, uh, race engineer for Paul Menard when he was at Dale Earnhardt Incorporated from like 2002 to 2005. Then he moved over to Hendrick Motorsports, was in the engineering department there with the team until 2008. He also had a brief stay at Junior Motorsports in a very similar role. And then he had a 12-year career with Penske Racing where he switched from stock cars of NASCAR to the open wheel cars of the IndyCar series. And while he was with Penske, he had a, he was the winning race engineer for the 2015 Indianapolis 500 win with Juan Pablo Montoya. Uh, he was the race engineer in 2017 when the Penske team claimed the IndyCar championship with Joseph Newgarden. And then he rejoined Hendrick Motorsports to serve as director of performance development before transitioning into the role of technical director. But earlier this year, he was the one who called the shots at Aero McLaren when Kyle Larson was doing trying to do the double with Indianapolis 500 and the uh, Coca-Cola 600. So he's been very actively involved in both open wheel and NASCAR. Yes, yes. Well, they're running out of reasons not to uh, to improve their performance. Then, in other words, you're hiring mm-hmm. these big name guys and. And all right, let's uh, let's jump ahead here. I, I've already taken the eight car. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Brian next to win today at Talladega. As we all know, it's a total crapshoot. Anybody can win. We understand that. All right, Brian, who you got? 
I'm going to go with it's, it's time for Michael McDowell to win another race, even though he's starting on the pole. Pole sitters usually don't win, but, boy, six poles this year for him. Time for him to win a race. I'm going yeah, Michael McDowell. Amazing. amazing. Dan? I'll go Denny Hamlin today. You don't even have him in your final four. Oh, that's right. But <laughs> this doesn't get you in a final four. This is going to get you to round oh, eight. Right. Round eight. Yeah, he's very, very good uh-huh. at these kind of tracks. Okay, Peach. I don't know. I mean, the name that just keeps coming up in my brain, I want to go with Ryan Blaney. Um, but Chris Busher was, was – I, I can't hardly depart from a Ford driver. I'm so sorry. Um, can I pick two? <laughs> can I have right. Blaney and Busher? Yeah. Flip, flip the coin. We'll put you I'll down for Blaney. 17. By the I'll way – Oh, you go with Blaney. All right. Then we'll Blaney. say but, um by the way, nobody picked Chastain. His mother didn't pick him last week and uh and Chastain ended up winning that thing. So um I don't know if anybody saw it. This one could just say I'll pick I'll pick I'll pick the guy that doesn't crash in the yeah, last lap. Throw I mean, a dart. It could be anybody. Yeah. No kidding. It could be anybody. Exactly right. Hey, maybe uh, we'll have a surprise winner again. Those are always fun. And uh, by the way, Brian, uh, in the Leo's pool, I picked the, the the number one starter. I've never picked a pole winner at the pole in the, the pool before, and so uh, I'm, I'm, my money is actually riding on the 34 car today. So good, good for me. Um, it, it, the new bodywork. Did you see some of the stuff they're coming up with to get these cars to stay on the ground and not roll over and not flip and not? potentially hurt our drivers um the one of the new ones i saw had a piece that came down actually over the windshield we are getting these to look a little more modified all the time it's a stock car but um dan i don't know they did something to the roof flaps that actually had been there before or something and now this is a kind of a big deal that they're they're bringing it back yeah, and something about the side skirt or something too. Are they are they extending that? I would guess like the side skirt thing is just to keep air from getting under the car. That's I think when it's it gets exactly sideways, the air gets under and up it goes. You know, you have to somehow block that. Um, I guess you're not going to know until somebody gets sideways. And then the roof flap, they put a piece of fabric on one side of the roof flap, so when the flap comes up, one of them is it's, it's kind of it's kind of like a shield on the side, so it looks like a, a two sided thing instead of the flap just going up in the air, and it's supposed to catch some of the air to keep the car on the ground as well. Sale. That was that's the one that was on there at one time, and they had taken it off with the next gen car. Um, what yeah, really, well, what, like, you wanna, what would keep these cars on the ground? Dave? Well, if you're running like fifth on the last lap and you have no way of winning, don't go turn the guy in, in fourth ahead of you and cause a big wreck. Think you're going to bulldoze through him to get the the flag? Wow, mind blown on that. I'm hoping that that isn't going to happen today because even though things like this happen in Xfinity and trucks, these are the creme de la creme, the best of the best. These are the greatest race car drivers our country can produce, and that can't possibly happen when everybody gets frustrated and go, I, I owe this guy from six races ago and all that other crap, too. So I'm There's wishing, a we're, caveat on there. They're not all the creme de la creme. Some of them are people who just have a big checkbook, too. You know, you just take the wind right out of my sails. Thanks a lot. You know, we, we've heard, you know, it generally spoken about this series that, that they have the best drivers. Now we have the best, richest drivers, you know. I mean, it's... You need to we, put that asterisk on there. We have come to that. Unbelievable. Well, um, hey, Brian, by the way, uh, you were talking about uh, in your results before, all that big stuff going on at Williams Grove out in Pennsylvania. I missed that by just a couple of days. Yes. I didn't, real- I didn't realize they were going to race out there. Are we taking was- a pick for Oktoberfest today? I'll take time uh, to Jeff. I'll take time to Jeff. What, what a surprise. Um, I'll, I'll take, take the other five. Five. Oh, oh, you're taking him. first. Okay. I'll take Gabe Summers because I know there's somebody out there listening to us that's probably smiling at you to hear that I'm going to take him. Oh, there you Point go. Point battle is pretty tight between him and Levon Vandergeest. All right. And uh, Dan? All right. Uh, boy, that'd be <laughs> tough. We took all the good guys? No, yeah. Uh, Casey Johnson. Is he running? I'll, give, I'll take yeah. Casey Johnson. Casey? Nobody took Johnny Sauter. Isn't that interesting? Hey, thanks for tuning in. And what we want you to remember is real race cars have doors. 
even if they do climb in through the windows. LTN is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta. Our engineer is Matt Losey. Thanks for tuning in next week. This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash LTN Radio Network. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network.